Hello ladies and gentlemen, here I am staring into yet another new box. To be perfectly honest with you, I haven't stared into this many different boxes in such a short space of time since my teenage years. But at least these ones are smooth and hopefully the owner's boyfriends won't try to kill me. It comes in a nice sleek cardboard no frills presentation box with the instructions thoughtfully secreted in a pouch on the inside of the lid. But if I know the degenerates who view my channel, I know one thing. They only read instructions after they've fucked everything up. Peeling back the veil, one quickly realises that the old adage is correct. When something is this big, it only comes in black. The stick has a nice bit of weight to it, which is very useful for small movements or as an impromptu weapon to club an escaping punishment measured into submission. At the top of the girthy head is the trim switch, the castle or sensor select switch, and the pickle or weapon release button on the very left. Moving back towards the shaft, the first thing you'll notice is a two-way rotary switch with a push button in the centre position. Beside that is the recce event mark button. Further along the shaft, in the thumb position on the left-hand side, you'll find the weapon select button. The head is made from two pieces of tough moulded plastic, while the shaft is made from two pieces of cast metal. I'm told the reason for this is due to the angle of the stick and weight considerations. At the bottom front of the shaft is the paddle switch, Close by is the on designate button, and then at the very top of the shaft joining the head is the two stage trigger, which is made from molded plastic. Doesn't the front of the head remind you of the creature from Alien? At the base of the shaft, you'll find the standard Thrustmaster Warthog base connector and thumb wheel. For the millennials among you, these are called PS2 connectors. Back when your mum began selling her body on the internet, they were used to connect keyboards and mice. Here's a quick comparative view of the Warthog stick and the FA-18 add-on stick. The first thing you'll notice is the Geiger-esque head on the add-on stick is much broader and more rounded. You'll also notice the new add-on is curved to reach those pleasure zones, ladies. Sorry, wrong script. Incidentally and surprisingly, each stick has exactly the same number of functions. Attaching the stick to the base is almost foolproof. Just carefully line up the connectors and gently push the stick home. I say almost foolproof because I'm sure the engineers at Thrustmaster are scratching their heads at how so many idiots get this wrong, while thanking their lucky stars the gobshites are allowed nowhere near real aircraft. Incidentally, there are some places one should never stick one's thumb. The trim hat is an 8-way switch. For those of you still living in the pre-track IR world, it may be used as a point-of-view hat. The recce button takes a little bit of force to operate and pushes home with a satisfying clunk. The castle switch is a four-way hat with the push button. There's both tactile and audio feedback for all operations. The two-way rotary push button is designed for VR users, but it can be set to any function. I use it in VR for moving the pilot's body back and forward with the center set as a VR zoom. This is the pickle button and should need no introduction. It takes a little bit of force to apply. The weapon select switch is a four-way hat with the push button. The axes are slightly offset to make it easier to operate with your beam flicker. As far as I'm concerned, the two-stage trigger is the star of the show. It has a nice tight pull to it. When you squeeze that trigger, it feels like something significant is going to happen. You'd have to be a complete imbecile to accidentally discharge a weapon with this trigger. The paddle switch is just about right to comfortably operate with the stink end of your shocker. This is the on-designate switch. It on-designates things. Now we're going to hop into DCS and take a look at how it all goes together. Just to add a bit of life and have a few things going on, I've created a small mission. In the mission there are a few ships and a couple of carriers with aircraft taking off and landing. I'm going to take off from the deck of the Stennis and my shining UF-18. Then I'll turn northwest and engage a number of F-5s, which are hopefully far enough apart so as not to make me the unwilling participant in a prison menage a gang. This is of vital importance when doing a carrier takeoff in the F-18. Keep your cock wranglers away from the stick until you're off the deck. The sheer amount of fuckwits I've seen leaving the deck in an F-18 and going almost instantly vertical because they're swinging from the stick like they're in the finals of the World Reach Around Championship is absolutely astounding. So the rule is give it a second or two after leaving the deck, then re-engage your cock canoodler. You may or may not have noticed my little stick cam in the bottom left corner. Rather than using the in-game controls, I thought it would be nice to give you guys a little treat and let you all look at how I manipulate my stick. The FA-18C add-on stick is a replica of the stick from the original aircraft and is fully licensed by Boeing. Here you can see me use the sensor select switch to make the HUD, then the right MFD, then the center MFD sensor of interest. Any MFD displaying a movable sensor or a sensor with a movable cursor may be made solely via the sensor select switch. 
Pushing down on the sensor select switch will allow you to IFF the target you're currently tracking. The comfortably positioned and nicely angled weapon select switch allows you to jump straight into air-to-air -air mode and choose the correct weapon for the job at hand. Before this all goes to hell and devolves into a tutorial you could find on any other YouTube channel, I'll try to describe my impressions of and experiences with the stick. Oh and for all you regular viewers, don't worry, at the very end I'll condense it all to a few seconds and wrap up by cramming in a nice big juicy dick joke. The first time I heard about the stick, I'm sure like the rest of you, was about two years ago. It was displayed as a prototype on the Thrustmaster stand in a glass case to prevent neckbeards from drooling on it. A momentary victory for Thrustmaster, it was a complete loss for the rest of us, because the neckbeards returned to their dark corners, hovels and basements and proceeded from there to drool all over the internet. Back in 2017, for a solid three month period, the choices facing one attempting to escape this cascade of drool revolved around either building an arc or buying a shotgun. Then for about a year there was radio silence, and I was once again entertained as the neckbeard's lascivious lust turned to impotent rage. You see, dear viewer, I'm the type of person who doesn't get too excited by anything until it's in my hand, on my computer, or wrapped around my cock. And if it's all three, all the better. So first of all, I'm going to talk quickly about setting up the stick on my computer in DCS. By the way, you can also use this stick in X-Plane, Elite Dangerous, IL-2 or any other flight sim you choose. Obviously this stick was designed specifically with the F-18 in mind, and even more specifically with the DCS F-18 in mind. Setting up controls in DCS is a doddle, so you just pop the stick on your Warthog base, assign your controls and away you go. When you've assigned all the options on the stick, there are three extra little buttons to play with. If you have a VR headset, you may assign those to pilot position and VR zoom. Or if you still live in the 2D world, you may assign them to chaff, flare and dispense. Now let's move on to the second of my three criteria, how it feels in the hand. I have to be perfectly honest here, when I first heard the top part was made from plastic, I was a little bit sceptical. You see, I'm one of those strange people who likes the feeling of cold hard steel in their hand. However, in this case, the plastic actually makes sense because I have the feeling if the bulbous Geiger-esque head were made from steel, it would start pulling on the Y-axis. According to my ultra-precise scales, one has to ensure one doesn't get ripped off. It weighs 836 grams, whereas the Warthrog stick weighs 1.04 kilos. I've no idea what those weights are in feudal measurements, but for those who use them, I suggest you either Google a conversion table or join the rest of us in the 21st century. Additionally, it's worth noting that this isn't your typical Xi Jinping's Euro Discount Empire plastic. It's of good quality and robust enough for the job. And finally, your phallus feeler mostly rests on the metal part anyway. Speaking of phallus feelers, mine are medium size and the stick fits like a glove. All the buttons and switches are easily reached without any uncomfortable contortion of the wrist or thumb. For those of you still paying attention, I'm not moving on to the third of my criteria for obvious reasons. The stick is obviously designed for those who spend a lot of time in the FA-18C or SIMPIP builders. Additionally, it's almost identical to the Harrier stick, not too dissimilar from the F-15E stick, and certainly wouldn't look out of place in any space sim build. Now let's move on to the price. It costs around 175 shekels, but if you're the sort of person that keeps a very precise scales at home, you'll realise it's not that expensive in the grand scheme of things. Before I sum up, I'll try to explain where I'm coming from. I'm an optimist, but also a cynic. My inner optimist knows the glass is half full, but my inner cynic suspects it's half full of piss and wonders if they've wiped their knob all the way around the rim. So initially, while really loving the idea of this stick, I wasn't sure if it was the stick for me. But after a short time in VR, I quickly realised I really enjoyed playing with this stick. And the more I played with the stick, the more I looked forward to getting home after a long hard day and playing with it again. And that also quite accurately sums up my teenage years.